Wouldn't it be a bummer to get to heaven and Jesus wouldn't be there? <laughs> you know, weird things go through my mind, but I'm singing that song and I'm going, you know, I mean, think about it. It's not going to be heaven without Jesus because he's the light. Amen. It'll be a little dark up there. All right. So, all right. Uh, I want to tell you a story I thought was pretty awesome. Um, uh, Brad and Kimmer came out of uh, being in with the doctor. And uh, Kimmer gathered everybody together and said, I'm just going to say this once. And she kind of gave all the bad news. And there are a host of teenagers there. And so, of course, everybody kind of took it real hard. And everybody sat down, and we pretty much filled up the entire uh, uh, waiting room there. And then I saw Kimmer get up. And I'm down, I was talking with Pam, and, and I don't know who else was down there. I think maybe Jordan and, and Dallas were down there at that time. And I look, and Kimra has all of the teens standing and circled around her. And I thought, that's kind of unusual. Maybe she's comforting, tell them it's going to be okay. So I thought, well, maybe I can help. So I kind of walk down that way, and I hear her. And she's telling the gospel story of Jesus Christ. And she gets them all around there, and she says, I want you to know something. Ben may not come through this. And the only way that you'll ever possibly see Ben again is to trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ because he died for your sins. And she went through the Romans road of salvation with them. She had them all bow their head. And she says, I'm going to pray a prayer. My prayer doesn't save you, but you can pray this prayer and repeat after me. And if this, this is from your heart to God, you will know. That someday, whether Ben lives or not, you'll be with Jesus. And she prayed with him and then went back and sat down. And I walked up to her and I, you know, I heard Brad are sitting there and I said, Kimra, I want you to know that was amazing. And she said, Brother Dave, I may never get a chance to talk to all of those kids again like this. And I thought, you know, you're right. Isn't it special? that even in a tragic situation someone can see an opportunity for God to work you see sometimes we get wrapped up in our way and our thoughts and what we're going through and we may not see the bigger picture you know when Brad and Kimra woke up this morning, there was not a thought that crossed their mind that today was going to end up like it did. And you know what? You didn't have that thought either. And when you wake up tomorrow, if God allows you to wake up, it may turn out to be a pretty sorry day. But we have to understand something. We don't see the bigger picture right now. We don't. Isn't it awesome to have a God that does see the bigger picture? If you would come to me and say, Brother Dave, I want you to give me some guidance. What's going to happen to me tomorrow? And I'm going to say, well, what do you, I don't read palms. <laughs> I don't read tea leaves. I don't know what you want me to do for you. Well, Brother Dave, you've been in the ministry all these years. And I'm going to say, so? You know, there comes a time in your life when all the good words of friends, though they may bring you comfort and they may bring you some strength, the only thing you have is the Lord. But you know what? It's enough. It's enough. Because you know what? That's the difference. That is the difference. I don't deal with the 
sometimes tragedies of life like Brother Kim does. But I have been in many occasions where I have seen and been a part of and been there when souls have gone home to be with the Lord. I have. And you know what? Even though a family is always sad, there can be a joyous home going because we are not saying goodbye. We're saying, we'll see you soon. So I knew that this was going to be a different kind of service. Um, Brother Kim got up to the hospital uh, after the morning service. And he, he walked up to me and said, Dave, there's a possibility that you might be preaching tonight. I said, okay. I said, let me know. So I went to him at 2 o'clock. I said, Brother Kim, you going to hang around? What would you like for me to do? And he said, I'll let you know. Okay. At 3 o'clock, I went to him. I said, Brother Kim, uh, what's the plan? Well, I'm going to hang around a little bit longer. I'll let you know. I said, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving. So Pam and I got in the truck, and I said, Pam, she hadn't eaten. I said, would you like to grab some? Yeah, let's stop over here. And I looked at the clock and said, nope, sorry, i got to go. So we ran back to church, and I printed out a few verses. And uh, Brother Kim did let me know about 515 uh, that I was going to go ahead and be preaching tonight. Uh, so uh, that's, all, that's all right. So Brother Rodney, if you have some of these, I'm going to name them off. They may not be in order. Okay, but we're going to psalm, uh, start with Psalms 46.1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Let's pray. Father, we've done a lot of praying tonight. Lord, there's been a lot of praying today because we know that you're the only one we can go to. Lord, I don't have any words of comfort. I don't have any words of strength other than the words that you have given me out of your word. What I say doesn't matter. The comfort I give is meaningless unless it comes from you. Lord, I am faulty and I'm failed. I mean well, but we know that your words are true. And we know that if we're in trouble, we have somebody to run to. And that is a great comfort to us. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in time of trouble. Um, I have told this story, but you've, I've been around here long enough. I really don't have any new stories. Okay? Nothing new's happened to me in a long time, all right? Um, well, my wife's making noises over there, and Ed liked that, whatever, whatever it was. <coughs> um, Years ago, um, when my dad left Bible college, dad and mom, we moved back to Glendale, Arizona. And I can, I can still remember my mom walking me into a school and saying, I'd like to enroll my son in school. And they said, where do you live? And mom kind of pointed over here and they said, well, you're on the wrong side of the street. Everybody on that side of the street gets bused to Peoria, Arizona. And my mom said, but the school we can almost see from our house. And uh, they said, it doesn't matter. You're on the wrong side of the street. You have everybody from this quadrant has to be bused over to Peoria, Arizona, which was uh, not that far away, but it was a good bus ride. And I can remember... Um, walking into that school and I felt something right away as a new kid at the school and that was I was not welcome okay I learned real quick um, 
I, I, I want you to understand I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be prejudiced in any manner, but this was a, about a 100% almost Hispanic school. I am not Hispanic. I was not welcome. Okay? So w when you get put in that situation, you very quickly find out where you're going to go and what you're going to do. All right? Who you're going to hang out with. All right, there was a restroom down the hall right by my home room. Could not use. I had to go all the way around to another side and use that restroom because I wasn't allowed in that restroom. Anyway, uh, I learned very quickly that you didn't kind of walk on your own in, in certain places. But there was a guy that uh, rode the bus with me and Everybody called him Crazy John, and his name was John McKinnon. I haven't seen him in a million years. He may be dead now. I don't know. But for a very short time of, in my life, he was my friend, okay, because they called him Crazy John. He was actually old enough to drive to junior high. Um, he, he, he'd been there quite a while. That was back in a, in a time when they didn't forward you and scoot you up, you know. Uh, so John was, I think, at his third or fourth try at eighth grade. All right. And John was a rather large fellow. And he was crazy. They called him Crazy John. So whenever there was a situation, I would look for Crazy John. He was my friend. All right. If John wanted a Coke, I'd buy John a Coke. <laughs> All right, and, and I can still remember I, there was a time when I had to go to the bathroom and get back to class, and I went in the wrong restroom, okay? And I kind of got cornered in that restroom, and things were going to get ugly, and I was going to get beat up. And John McKinnon walked in the restroom, Okay? And he said, basically, what's happening here? And they told him to mind his own business. And the beating did commence. <laughs> All right? I wasn't part of the beating. I was an innocent, innocent bystander, but I want you to tell you I did enjoy uh, the beating. Okay? And from that time on, anytime I wanted to go to the bathroom, I'd find John and say, can we go to the bathroom? We say, sure, let's go. <laughs> All right? I don't know that you can really twist that around and apply it to this verse that John McKinnon was my God in eighth grade. But I tell you what, I looked for him, okay? I looked for him. When we're in trouble and we need help, who are we supposed to be looking for? God, okay? God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help. It doesn't say, and, and I love that, and I understand this is old English, but it doesn't say a help in trouble. It's very descriptive. A very present help. You know, there were times that John McKinnon was not with me. But I tell you what, there's not a time that God's not with us. And we may be going through a tough time. And if you have lived on this earth long enough, you've gone through a tough time. If you say, nothing ever bad has happened to me, hold on, sister. Hold on, brother. Because we live in a world that bad things happen. Okay? But the good thing is, we have somebody to call on. All right? We have somebody to reach out to. That's always going to be there. <clears throat> John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Have you ever been afraid of something? How many of you have phobias? Okay. How many of you are scared of heights? 
All right. And sister, I'm going to use you right there back about a zip line. We had a young lady right back here that went on a zip line with us. Yeah, sister, she's going to zip. Oh, yeah, that's right. We went to a trip to Branson. All right. And we went on a zip line. And this young lady right back here decided she was going on a zip line. She got to the first one. And by the time she got up on the step, I don't even know if you remember this, uh, sister, but your arms were around my neck. Okay. But I tell you what, after that first zip line, you had fun, okay? Sometimes we really have to realize we're making our own fear, okay? Some of you, and how many of you ever have actually jumped out of an airplane? Anybody here? Well, there, there's one. Now, you were probably forced to in the Army, okay? No one should ever jump out of a perfectly good plane, okay? That, that's just not right, Okay? Uh, if you, you need some counseling if you do that and you're not made to do that, okay? Uh, but I tell you what, there's some people who do not have that disconnect of natural fear. They don't fear anything, okay? And you know what? God sometimes gives us fear as a warning, okay? But if we come here, it says, let not your heart be troubled. Um, has anybody ever lost sleep over worrying about something? Anybody here? Oh, okay, yeah. If you didn't raise your hand, you're lying, okay? Because you know what? We all worry about stuff. We all think about stuff, all right? Um, but the thing is, we're supposed to turn that over to the Lord, right? And I'm preaching to myself here too. A lot of times we come down to an altar or we give it to the Lord in prayer Wherever we may be, we say amen and we take it right back again. That's where our fear and our trouble is because we haven't given it to God. Okay? Psalm 42, 11. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Okay. I, sometimes I worry about young parents when they bring their babies down and they dedicate them to the Lord. I really do. Because many times they don't understand exactly what they're doing. Do you understand what you're doing? You're giving up all claim to your child. What, 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 wait a minute. No more dedications in our church. Who are you giving them to? Okay. So if the Lord takes them home, did he do something wrong? Whose are they? Do we have a right to be angry with God? No. Do we have a right to be hurt? Yeah. They're not ours. They are not ours. I'm, I think Brad and Kimra very much understood this as I was, Pam and I were driving them to Oklahoma City. And we're talking on the way up, and I'm telling them, Ben's in the Lord's hands. We know that. Ben is not yours. You say, well, I mean, you've got to think about this. We're his, they're his parents. But Ben doesn't belong to them. They're the Lord, or he's the Lord's. And if the Lord decides to take Ben home, that's his decision. Now let me ask you something real quick. Is there a better place for a person to be than with the Lord? You can go ahead and say no. All right, thank you for your great answers. You can talk tonight, we'll let you. All right. Our separation causes us great pain. We understand that. But if we know where that person is, we're going to be okay. Because we know they're taken care of. We know they're taken care of. You know, um, I can remember many, many years ago, this was kind of a weird thought as a, as a young parent. But I often thought this, and I, I was watching some show about a kidnapping. And I often thought this as I was watching that show said, you know, if there comes a point 
when I have to choose whether my child dies and goes and, be, and is with the Lord, then is kidnapped as a three or four year old and I never see them again, I'd rather be with the Lord. You say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You, you just wish that your child would die. No, I want my child to be with Jesus. Okay? I don't want my child to be kidnapped and taken with a stranger. Do you understand? I want my child to be with someone who loves them and loves them better than me. Okay? Say, well, br Brother Dave, you, you do have weird thoughts. I understand that. I do. My mind goes way off onto some things. But I think you can follow that thought. If I don't know where my child is, it's going to ruin the rest of my life. If I know where my child is, I'm going to hurt. But it's going to be okay. That's a big, big difference. Okay? We can praise. I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. My countenance. Look at your face. How does it look? Okay? I've often said sometimes, you need to be up here and lead music sometime. And look at y'all. All right? What's that countenance going on there? You had a rough week? <laughs> Let's, you, we're here supposed to be praising Jesus. Amen? All right? Amazing grace. Look at my sorry face. Okay? You got to wake up and, and smile for Jesus every once in a while. I know it might hurt, but it'll be okay. Psalm 73, 25, and 26. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Is there somebody else you can go to? Say, oh, I have all kinds of counsel. I have all kinds of comfort. I tell you what, uh, uh, Kimra's, one was her boss and one was a co-worker. They came up and, and, and were up at the hospital today. And they mentioned it and several of the nurses mentioned it. Like, are all these people your family? And Kimra said, yeah, they're my church family. They said, wow. Okay. That comfort is there. We have each other. And, uh, and you know, I appreciate that. I've been at a time in my life that I greatly appreciated that. But I tell you what, as we just started out with the message, that all kinds of fades away. It can. But God's always there. You see, a lot of times the pain actually comes about when nobody's left there. But we have to realize we're never alone. And God is there. What's the next verse, brother? My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is my strength of my heart and my portion forever. Okay. We're going we're gonna to finish up here pretty quick. Our flesh and our strength fail. Have you ever failed in strength? Have you ever been in a situation where there was nothing else you could do? I don't know what, what, what has ever happened in your life, but I tell you what, there's going to come a time when there's nothing left and your flesh and your strength, they fail. And then a miraculous thing happens. God steps in and he picks you up and he carries you through the hard times, through the tough times, and then, slowly but surely, things get a little bit better because he's feeding you. He's pumping you up. You were empty. Maybe you were trying to do it on your own. But God gave you the strength. Amen? He's going to pick you back up. Say, so, Brother Dave, why are you talking about all this stuff? Because I tell you what, you need God's strength. You need God's strength in the good times, and you need God's strength in the bad times. It isn't amazing that the first thing that somebody asks for when they go to jail is a Bible. I've always thought that's kind of unusual. 
Something bad happened to them. Maybe they got caught. Now the first thing they do is ask for a Bible. Wouldn't it have been a lot better to read it before you got there? Say, oh yeah, that's right, Brother Dave. Where are you at? So I'm not in jail. <laughs> I say, I, I tell you what. You need to prepare for the bad times in the good times. So you know how you're going to respond. You need to have God's word in your heart. So that when a test or a trial comes doesn't always have to be some tragedy. But when that test or that temptation or that trial comes, the Holy Spirit can say, this verse, this thought, this message. And you go, yeah. Because if you wait until you're going through it, it's too late. It's too late. Okay? Um, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Guys, that's where we're going to end tonight, but I want, you, I want you to think about this verse. After you pray, after you beg God, after you fall before his face, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds. Okay? And if you've ever studied that phrase, shall keep your hearts and minds, that is not necessarily talking about salvation at all. What's that, ta what's that talking about is back to that countenance thing, that peace, okay? Um, there's been, we, we've been here a few years now, and over the years, there's been some folks laid right here, all right? And I tell you what, when you walk down that aisle and you have to make the turn, I have to go back out. Brother Kim's standing over here. He's shaking his hand. You're passing by somebody that maybe you loved. Okay? It happens to all of us. Sooner or later, if you've been on this earth more than five minutes, it happens to all of us. Okay? But if you look through that, when you go to God, the difference is, number one, is that person saved? Number two, are you saved? Number three, are you leaning on Christ for strength? So that when you walk down here, you can say, see you soon. See you soon. Don't ever tell somebody goodbye if you know they're going to be in heaven. What are you thinking? See you soon. Because you're going to be reunited. Okay? It's going to be awesome. When you walk down that aisle, you can say, you know what? When I get to heaven, they're going to be there. And they're going to be with Jesus. All right? I can still picture my dad. He's walking around heaven going, yeah, I was right about that. Oh, I may have had that one wrong. But I'll talk to somebody else about it. And I'll try to straighten it out. <laughs> but he's going around about all the stuff he preached for years. He's walking around going, you know, pretty good stuff up here. Pretty good stuff up here. And he's looking down and said, would y'all hurry up and get up here? i tell you what, you know, how he was talking about in a Sunday school uh, meeting this morning. He said he went to church camp, basically got back, and there was a lot of stuff different in the world. An airplane had been shot down. Israel is lighting up the Gaza Strip. Um, and, you know... Whether the Lord comes back soon or not, I don't know. Be okay if he came tonight. Be all right. Okay, I'm ready to go. I don't know about y'all. Be okay with me. All right. Can you imagine that reuniting in heaven? 
Can you imagine that? How good is that going to be? And then all of this stuff that we spend all our time staying awake at night, worried about all day long, missing loved ones who are up there, all of the worries of this stinking world, okay? I was in such a hurry to get back, I was going to stop in Oklahoma City to get gas. It was 3.09 there. I got to Chickasha, it was 3.59. It's almost cheaper to drive back up there to get gas. I said, come on. We worry about that junk, don't we? We're going to worry about gas in heaven. Who cares? All right, we're going to be with Jesus. You know, I'm going to look forward to seeing my dad. I am. But I tell you what, what about that throne? What about falling in front of Jesus? What about seeing those scars? Saying thank you. That's pretty good stuff. Amen. Let's all stand. Maybe you're here tonight and you're carrying a burden. Maybe you need to lay it at the feet of Christ. Maybe you'd like to come down and pray for Ben tonight. I know the family would appreciate that. How long has it been since you've been down to the altar? Maybe you'd like to do that tonight. Lord, we love you and we need your strength tonight. Again, be with Ben and Brad and Kimra. Lord, I thank you for carrying us, giving us strength and giving us joy. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. as long as they would like to. Amen. <clears throat> I want to thank you for coming tonight. I know this has kind of been a different service, but I hope it's been a blessing to you. And uh, I hope that you can go through life and you can trust Jesus. Amen. Because he is trustworthy. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Brother Paul Callis, would you lead us please?
Amen. Thank you. You are dismissed. Thank you for coming tonight.